So yeah, when it comes to high-end emulation on this mini PC, it definitely doesn't disappoint. This CPU is putting out some great performance. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC from Menace Forum that offers some serious CPU performance. With this, we've got 14 cores and 20 threads, and of course, we've got a very small form factor here. It's definitely coming in a bit larger than some of their other mini PCs that they offer over on the website, but we've still got a very small PC here, and overall this is putting out some amazing CPU performance. This is known as the NAD9 or the NAD9, and it's definitely a workhorse given the CPU they opted to use here, and we can also add two 2.5 inch drives in the bottom of the unit. Overall, I do like the design. I think the case looks great, and we've got plenty of ventilation here. So inside of the box, we're obviously gonna get the mini PC itself. They also include a 120 watt power supply and a vertical stand. So this is pretty cool. I love these little mini PCs. You can stand up vertically. I just think they look awesome. But if you wanted to, you could set this on the desk horizontally and you don't have to worry about blocking off any of the ventilation. But when it's set up in the stand, I think it looks really nice. Got kind of an industrial design here and I'm actually really digging this thing. And you know, when it comes to I.O. for being such a small form factor PC, we've got plenty of it up front and around back. We can do up to four monitors on this unit, two HDMI, two USB. And internally, you can see we've got a pretty massive cooler when it comes to these mini PCs. And that's because this is using a 14 core, 20 thread i9 CPU. This also utilizes dual channel SODIMM RAM. And up top here, we've got access to our M.2 SSD. Now, as soon as I pulled this thing apart, I noticed that there's actually an MXM slot here. And when it comes to these mini PCs, this is the very first time I've seen an MXM slot. And if you're not familiar with this, basically we can add an MXM GPU. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to be selling the GPUs later on down the road or a configuration that has it. But we see this quite a lot in, you know, workhorse laptops, so like Quadros and things like that. But they do offer like the 1050 or a 1070 you can pick up used on eBay. And if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind picking one up and adding it to this mini PC. And finally here, taking a look at the bottom, we've got a mounting bracket and connectors for two 2.5 inch drives. I would go with SSDs, but I guess you could use mechanical if you wanted to. Now when it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. We've also got our headphone jack, mic in jack, and a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port. And when we move around back, we've got a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, two full-size HDMI ports, we've got two more USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and both of these can function as display ports, so in total we can do four displays out of this unit. Unfortunately, the front USB-C only does data transfer, but I think four monitors would be plenty on this mini PC. We've also got two more USB 3.2 ports, but these are Gen 1, and two USB 2.0 ports. Now, one thing I personally think is missing from this unit is Thunderbolt 3. I really wished one of these did support Thunderbolt 3, but I think they might have kind of missed out on that due to the MXM GPU slot they have internally. So I'm not sure how this is going to work down the road, but as soon as I have more information, I will post it in my community section. Now, when it comes to the specs of this little PC, for the CPU, we've got the Intel i9-12900H, 14 cores, 20 threads, and with this, we get 6 performance cores up to 5 gigahertz and 8 efficiency cores up to 3.8. It's got built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units, and this will clock up to 1450 megahertz. Now, keep in mind, they are offering a bare-bones version of this over on their website, so you can add your own RAM and storage, and it does support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. We've also got that one M.2 SSD drive, and two 2.5-inch SSDs can be added to this thing. We've also got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and out of the box with the non-bare-bones version, this will be running Windows 11, but you could install Linux if you wanted to. Okay, so I've had the PC up and running for a little while now, and by the way, I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM here and a 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and personally, I do like the way it looks, especially in that stand. I think it sets it off when it's standing up vertically like that. Now I've got a bunch of stuff installed to test, and you know, one of my favorite things to do with these 12th gen Intel chips, be it desktop or mobile, is emulation. I think they offer some amazing performance. And uh, we've got plenty of CPU power here. I think what's really going to hold this chip back 
are the built-in Intel XE graphics. And that's one of the big reasons I say they kind of missed out on adding a Thunderbolt 3 port here. That way we could have easily added an external GPU, but with that MXM, it does give me hope. The MXM cards that I've seen on eBay, at least the used ones, aren't really that expensive, so yeah, I think that's something I'd love to test out. But when it comes to everyday normal use case scenarios with a PC like this, I mean, email checking, web browsing, document editing, you could even get away with some photo editing on this machine like it sits, and uh, these chips also handle 4K really well. Here's a 4K 60 HDR video from YouTube looking great here and by the end I only had two drop frames and I really think it comes down to my internet connection. But so far in the terms of using this as an everyday PC, no problems whatsoever. Now the next thing I wanted to do was run a few benchmarks so let's go ahead and take a look at those. With Geekbench 5 we got a single core score of 1573, multi 9538. So yeah, this i9 is really putting down some great CPU performance, but let's go ahead and check out some GPU test with 3 d Mark. And the first one here is Night Raid. We got a score of 18,364. Next up, we've got Fire Strike, 4,967. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,863. So yeah, this is definitely lagging behind the new RDNA 2 graphics and the Ryzen 6000 mini PCs that we've seen. But let's go ahead and check out some gaming and see what this thing can really do. And first up, we've got Doom Eternal. I had a good feeling it was going to run this game at full speed. I mean, it's very well optimized. But uh, as you can see, we did have to go down to 720p to get an average of around 67 FPS. Street Fighter V is one of those games that's always run really well on these XE graphics ever since they were introduced, and right now we're at 900p with a low-medium mix, and if you don't mind going all the way down to low with it, you can run this at 1080, or you could do a little bit of resolution scale, it's up to you, but it does run quite well on this system. Obviously, GTA V has been on the market for a while now, and with this little setup, we can actually go up to 1080p normal settings and get an average of around 78 FPS. Not bad, and you know, with all of the new driver updates and updates to the game, this is working pretty great on XE graphics. Taking it up to some harder to run games, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. We averaged 38 FPS, 720p low. Now, we've got more than enough CPU power for everything that you want to throw at this, but it's really coming down to that iGPU. As we know, the new RDNA 2 AMD graphics are just much better than these XE. Another one I was interested in checking out was Miles Morales, 720p low, and we're also using Intel's new XESS scaling option set to performance here, and with it set up like this, we still just can't hit 60 with it, so you might want to go ahead and lock this down at 45. Real good. The ref's an eyesore, but it's secure. And finally, for the PC game testing, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare. We're at 720p, and we do have Intel XESS set to performance. We got an average of 54 FPS, but we had a low of 35. So obviously, we're not going to be doing a lot of AAA gaming on these Intel XE graphics, but one place this whole chip itself shines is emulation. Here we have some PS3 using RPCS3. Vulcan back in with the stock resolution, which uh, out of the box, it just goes to 720p. We can run Demon Souls really well here. And even the harder to emulate games are fully playable on this chip, like Skate 3. And again, I do want to mention that, yeah, I mean, we've got more than enough CPU power for basically anything we want to throw at this. It's just really coming down to those integrated graphics. Now, uh, the last one I wanted to test here was some Switch emulation using Yuzu, and even on the lower end i3 12th generation chips, I've had great luck with it, so I figured we'd be able to run this at full speed, and for sure, 1080p, so we're in dock mode, using Yuzu with the Vulcan back in, we're good to go with Switch emulation. You can actually lower the TDP here. Uh, we're at around 55 watts with Switch emulation, but like I mentioned, on the 12th Gen i3, we can get away with Switch emulation in handheld mode at 18 watts, which really isn't that bad. 
And of course, if you wanted to go with the lower end stuff, PSP, Wii U, PS2, you're going to be good to go with this chip like it sits. Another thing I wanted to take a look at was total system power consumption from the wall. While I'm doing my test, this is plugged into a kilowatt meter, and at idle, 14 watts, which is lower than I thought it would be, given that we have that i9. But while gaming, this was pulling around 78 watts, and you gotta keep in mind, we're sending power to the iGPU and the CPU with those 14 cores pumping it out. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and GPU at the same time was 96 watts. So yeah, this thing can definitely pull a little more power than we're used to with these mini PCs, but we do have a higher end CPU, and really that's what this thing's got going for it. That 14 core, 20 thread i9 CPU can put down some amazing performance, and it'll handle anything that we can throw at this PC. I mean, it'll do it with ease. But we do have those Intel XE graphics kind of holding us back when it comes to gaming. Now for an everyday desktop PC, even photo editing, you want to do 4K video playback, this is a great machine, but for gaming the way it is right now with no Thunderbolt 3 and no MXM GPU, I would skip this one and go with something else from Menace Forum for gaming and they do offer some really awesome mini PCs. And one that I can highly recommend is their HX90G. If you're into Ryzen, it's got a 5900HX and we've also got a 660M GPU. This puts out some amazing performance. But if you want to go with Intel and NVIDIA, I would look at their Nook X line. They offer two models. You can pick one up with an 11th Gen i5 and an RTX 3060, or you could go all out with their 11th Gen i7 version that comes with an RTX 3070. I've done reviews on both, and the Nook X i7 is my favorite mini PC they've ever released. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're looking for a mini PC that offers amazing CPU performance, then the NAD9 is something I can definitely recommend. But uh, yeah, I would love to install an MXM GPU. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. I could pick up a used one on eBay, and I think we could definitely liven this thing up. But if you're interested in learning more about Menace Forum and the PCs they offer, I will leave a couple links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.